This is Breaking the Mould with Investment Director Russ Mould. Russ, you're looking Christmassy today. So are you, Clara. Like the pulley. Very good. Yes, yeah, snazzy. Very smart. Yours is nice as well. Thank you. Yeah, corporate colours. Red, uh -huh. grey and white. Russ, apart from the Christmas jumper, what is the Christmas fuss? Okay, well, I'm sorry to have to tell you all, this is the last breaking mould of the year, so I thought we'd quickly look at what's caused the fuss throughout 2014. Mm -hmm. See if there are any lessons we can learn for the 12 months ahead, especially as, let's face it, December's proven to be a bit of a tricky month, ending on a sour note, oil price slide, renewed market volatility. Well, that sounds like a plan. So mm. what are the trends that really leap out from 2014? Well, market? there's an old market saying, which is, a bad stock in a good sector will tend to outperform a good stock in a bad sector. Now think about that one. So it's worth looking at which areas did well and which did badly last year, and also to show them which are showing a little bit of momentum and those which are tailing off quite badly. Okay, so which areas did the best? Okay, well the following charts, four of them, all come from our good friends at Shares Magazine. Now every week they track the 39 areas that make up the FTSE All Share and rank them according to their performance. One's the best, 39's the worst, and then we have a look at what the trend, or they have a look at what the trends are. Now, the first graphic behind us shows the best five performers, pretty much that way all the mm -hmm, way through mm -hmm. the year, and their healthcare, real estate investment trusts, tobacco, food producers, and household goods. Now, there are some common themes to these sectors, hard to believe as it may be. There's generally a decent yield on offer. There's been some takeover activity, particularly in healthcare, and they've all got a bit of a, def of a defensive angle to them, as if to suggest some investors are involved in equities almost out of default rather than conviction, perhaps in search of that lovely income we've talked about all year. Now, if the people really believe we're in a bull market or a cyclical upturn, you would traditionally expect to see cyclical sectors at the top of the leaderboard, not some of these stodgy defensive names. Right, Russ, so who are the Christmas turkeys? Yeah, well, the biggest stuffing of the year was obviously received by the food retailers, so wooden spoon for them. Oil price collapse, that took care of the oil equipment sector. You can mm -hmm. see all of these going down there. However, note the presence of electronic and electrical equipment, general industrials, and also industrial transport. Again, cyclicals very much losing out, out here. Market perhaps isn't convinced by the strength of the economic recovery and is happier playing it a bit safer. Okay, Russ, so those first two charts cover the whole year. Yeah. But what's happened since St. Ledger's Day in September when the markets traditionally return from the summer? And generally summer? a bit perky, yeah. So let's have a look. I mean, the, 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 again, you, you see a distinct shift here. I mean, we've got the, the this one shows the ones who've lost the most mm -hmm. momentum, lost the most ranking. Actually, it's pharmaceuticals is one that's it's only gone from two to six. Mm -hmm. So let's not panic. And I guess that's because the bids for AstraZeneca and Shire went cool. Now, the other turkeys, however, they're a different story. Industrial engineering, oil and gas, mining and oil equipment. Again, commodity price weakness, fears of an economic slowdown explain that probably pretty simply. Now, the biggest gainers in the fourth quarter were chemicals and travel and leisure, potential beneficiaries of oil price weakness, and then come three yield-bearing stodgy old names, electricity, mobile telecoms, and personal goods. So what can we learn from all of this for the year ahead? Right, big deep breath, big finale now. Okay, I'm gonna really hammer through this. So in the end, past performance is no guarantee of the future. Let's bear, bear that in mind, but let's always respect the views of the market, even if it's not always right. Right now, investors are worried about growth, commodity prices, disinflation. Some of the best performers have been safer areas with guaranteed demand and a bit of pricing power. There also seems to be preference for yield, which is only natural at a time of record low bond yields and low returns on cash. Now, if the market senses economic growth is on the way, or the Bank of England's going to keep policy fast and loose for a lot longer than people expect, that might help cyclicals, but also yield stocks, because again, it'll be keeping bond yields low and returns on cash low. If, and I stress if, history is any guide, that is. Now, should we stay mired in a low growth environment, defensives in yield may rule the roost, again, if history is any guide, but the combination of uncertainty over, and this is the big finale, Bank of England's next move, electoral uncertainty given the election in May, spotty growth, negligible inflation, depressed returns on cash. We're going to have a really exciting 2015, just as we did 2014, even if the net result this year was, let's face it, a down year for the market. Okay, thank you, Russ. Pleasure. And thank you, of course, for joining us. We wish you a Merry Christmas and, of course, a Happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2015. Thank you. Now, Bye. where's that mistletoe? Uh, I've hidden it. Ah. Oh.